Welcome to today's session on levels of measurement. The concept of level of measurement lays the foundation for statistical analysis. So by now, it should be clear in your mind that when we speak about measurement, we refer to the process of assigning numbers to a property or characteristic of the phenomenon according to a set of rules. So we want to deal with numbers when we do quantitative research. That's what we are focusing on, quantitative research. So when we engage in quantitative research, we want to measure any concept which may be of interest to us. And then perform relevant statistical test, stati stat statistical analysis um, to obtain relevant information, which will allow us to uh, uh, obtain new findings and uh, find answers to our research questions. So measurement plays a key role here. The process of assigning numbers to whatever concept is of interest to us. Now, as you might imagine, when we do research, especially in social sciences, we need to deal with a vast variety of uh, concepts which are of different nature. We have concepts such as gender which is purely qualitative. But then we need to find a way to assign numbers to a variable like gender. We also deal with other concepts which are quantitative by nature, such as age or income. And so we therefore need to make use of different type of scales, as we're going to see. A classification was provided by a statistician back in the 1946, and this classification is still used today, and we refer to that classification as levels of measurement. As we are going to see, we have four different levels of measurement. Number one is nominal level of measurement. Number two, ordinal level of measurement. Number three, interval level of measurement. And number four, ratio level of measurement. By the end of this short video, hopefully it's going to be clear in your mind how to distinguish between these four different levels of measurement and bear in mind the distinction between those four levels of measurement uh, is very important very important because it has a major implication when it comes to the choice of statistical analysis as you're going to learn um, afterwards good so now let's go and look at each of those levels of measurement. Um, so as um, I was saying, so the classification was provided by a statistician named Stephen. Okay. And here we have four levels of measurement. Nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. I repeat, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Now, the classification is basically based on the amount of information we provide. The amount of information that the scale provides. You see, when we assign numbers, number 1, 2, 3, or whatever, number 40, number 50, when we assign numbers to a property or characteristic of a phenomenon, we want to capture information, isn't it? So, depending on the amount of information that we are able to capture, we then can classify our scale as being nominal or denominal interval ratio. 
Now, what type of information do we seek to capture? We want information about identity, about order, and magnitude. Remember that. We want information about identity, order, and magnitude. So, as we just mentioned, so the classification is widely accepted, widely used, and it informs the choice of statistical test. Now, just like a, as a quick uh, reminder, when we speak about measurement scale, we can first categorize measurement scale as being a non-numeric scale or a numeric scale. Okay, so you have measurement scales which by default are non-numeric. We also refer to those as categorical scales. And then we have scales which are by default numeric. A typical example here will be age, where you have basically an actual number to present age. A typical example of a categorical scale or non-numeric scale would be gender, where I don't get a number here, but instead I can only classify my respondents into categories, and then I can assign numbers to the categories, obviously. Good. Now, if my scale is non-numeric, if the scale is non-numeric, in terms of level of measurement, it's going to be either nominal or ordinal. The most basic one would be nominal. Actually, that's a lowest scale, lowest level, if you want. And ordinal would be the second one, where we capture a little bit more information. So it's a higher level of measurement. Now, if the scale is numeric, that's going to be either interval or ratio. So that's the first thing to understand. A scale can either be non-numeric, where you don't actually have a number which gives you a magnitude, a quantity of a property being measured. But the numbers, for example, here if I assign numbers, are going to represent categories. For quantum numeric scale, I have numbers which represent a magnitude, a quantity of a property, of a characteristic being measured, whatever it is, age or whatever else. Okay, so here we have our four levels of measurement, and as you, you will see here, we said that's the lowest amount of information being captured, that's the highest amount of information being captured. Uh, so the lowest uh, level of measurement would be a nominal scale. A little bit higher will be nominal, then we have interval, and then we have ratio, which is the highest level of measurement. So obviously, if you had the choice, you'll always um, choose to have a higher level of measurement. But for some variables, it's impossible to uh, use higher levels of measurement, whether it's ratio, interval, or even ordinal sometimes. If we take gender, it's impossible to make use of any of those. You can only settle for nominal scale, as we're going to see in a while. Good. So let's start with a nominal scale. Um, so the first level of measurement, the nominal scale. So a nominal scale is the most basic level of measurement. All right. Remember we said we have four, we have three uh, information three types of information if you want we can capture using a scale identity order and magnitude magnitude or if you want you can call that quantity for nominal the only information captured is identity so the numbers definitely do not represent a magnitude in any case it's a non-numeric scale here okay so the numbers do not represent a magnitude or quantity it only provides us information about identity. That's the only information you have. So that's a lowest level of measurement. The only thing which is important here, remember, measurement is about assigning numbers to a property characteristic according to a set of rule, rules. Then the only rule we have here is that the numbers should be mutually exclusive. They shouldn't be the same. 
Okay, so you can have different categories depending on variable you're measuring, category A, B, C. You assign numbers. The, most, the important thing is that you have different numbers here. It could be 1, 2, 3. It could instead be 2, 3, 1. It doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. It could be 10, 11, and 15. It could be anything provided the numbers are not the same. So that's what we mean here. So if you're using a nominal scale, the only rule is that the numbers are mutually exclusive. You don't use the same numbers, and the numbers allow you to differentiate between the categories of responses. That's it. That's what a nominal scale is about. Some example here. We took gender. So let's say gender. We have two categories. We can assign number one and two. It could be number two and one. It could be three, four, whatever. The most important thing here is that the numbers are different. Here, I can assign number one, two, three, four. I could assign number three, two, one, four. It doesn't matter. You see what I mean? It could be any other number. Numbers only allow us to differentiate between categories. But well, we like to keep things simple, isn't it? Why are we going to use number 100, 200, or whatever? We use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, things like that. Okay, here, for example, I can use 0, 1. We keep it simple, but remember, it could be any number provided the numbers are different for each category. Okay, same thing here, private, public, or whatever. Okay, so let's say I'm doing a survey across organizations and then I'm distinguishing between private and public. So I classify organizations as public or private. So I can assign the one, two, for instance, here. As simple as that. Good? So that's nominal scale. Now we move to the next uh, level of measurement, and that's ordinal. Okay, and that's second here. Still non numerical, or what we call categorical, but it's a little bit higher in terms of allowing us to capture more information. So still, as we said, the numbers won't represent a magnitude. We're still dealing here with a non-numerical scale. But here we have another piece of information. Remember, we, had, we have identity, order, and magnitude. So normally those are the three Uh, different kinds of information that our scale can provide us with. So for ordinal, the numbers allow us to identify the category, and as we will see, it also provides us information about the order. So indicate identity and order. Now, the order is based on the sizes, degrees of the different categories. All right. One thing to note here is that you can't find differences between the values. Hub. Mathematical operations are not possible between the values. And that's logical. Now, let's take an example here. So let's take that typical example. Educational qualification. Okay. So let's say I, I have here five levels, uh, five categories of educational qualification. And I need to assign numbers. So now we should be careful because it's not... We can use two basically uh, rules here. The first rule is that the number should be different so that we get the information of identity. But then there is another information that we can capture here. Because if I assign the numbers carefully so that a higher number represents a higher level of qualification, I also capture information about the order. So here, the numbers do not only allow me to identify the categories, identify to which category my observations are going to fall into, but it also allows me to know what is the degree or size of a property being measured, in that case here, education and qualification. So a higher number represents a higher level of qualification, a lower number, lower level of qualification. What could have been done vice versa? Um, higher number, lower, etc. But it's more intuitive to have a lower number for a lower uh, degree size of the property here. In that case, a lower number representing lower level of qualification. Another example, very often we deal with Likert scale question when we do social science research. And let's say we have an agreement uh, scale here, Likert scale, we strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. So again, I can assign the numbers here. Let's say one, two, three, four, and five. And again, seven numbers allow me to identify 
to which category my respondent observation will fall into. It also provides me information about the level of agreement. So a higher number represents a higher level of agreement. You see. So I get information about identity and order. So I think that should be clear in your mind here. Okay, for nominal numbers only allow me to differentiate between the categories. Okay. I hope that's clear in your mind. So, nominal numbers only allow us to differentiate between the categories. For ordinal, the numbers allow us to also rank the categories, find the order of the category based on a certain degree of size of the property being measured. You see? So the order matters here. So I have for an ordinal scale two levels of information. And I hope you realize here that for some variable it doesn't make sense to use an ordinal scale. Again, taking the typical case of gender, uh, it wouldn't make sense to say male category is higher or larger than female and female categories or vice versa. It wouldn't make sense. That's okay, so by default, we need to settle for a nominal scale. So that's why, at the start, I said, while we always try to aim for the high level of measurement, often the phenomenon, the phenomenon being measured, is such that we cannot make use of a high level of measurement. Good. So now let's move on to interval scale. So interval scale is a numeric scale. Right. So now we, we, we shift from non-numeric scales where the numbers represent categories for nominal numbers just allow us to identify the categories. Again, for ordinal, the numbers allow us to identify the categories and also allow us to rank the categories. Now we move to the numeric scale which both interval and ratio scales are. And here, the numbers actually provide us with an actual magnitude, an actual quantity. When I get a number, it means something. It has a, an actual meaning. It does not represent a category. It it actually is a quantity, a magnitude. So interval scales, just like ratio scales, are numeric scales. Okay, so the interval and ratio scales provide the highest level of information. Here, they provide identity, order, and also magnitude. Okay, all the three type of information that we can capture. Or importantly here, therefore, when we use a numeric scale, whether interval or ratio, we can find differences among numbers. You see, that was not possible for nominal or ordinal scale. For interval and ratio scale, we can find differences between values, and those differences are meaningful, we say. I'll explain that further when taking an example here. Okay, so let's look at some examples of interval scale. So let's take IQ test, for example. So as you know, normally an IQ test, 100 is the, is the mean value. And um, normally an IQ score will vary from something like around 70 to around 130-ish. It could be more, right? You can go a little bit less or a little bit more. You have uh, extreme geniuses. You have uh, then those are quite poor who goes to IQ as well. But on average, it's always 100, okay. Now, let's say someone scores 100 and, um, around 100 and, uh, I don't know, 120, let's say. And someone else scores 90. What is the difference between? Now, the first thing is that the 120 means something. It is an actual magnitude. It, al it allows us to identify, okay, what's the IQ score, so what's the level of IQ for the person, so identify based on IQ observation. It also gives us an idea about the order. Okay, so if someone gets a lower or higher score, we can order them easily. It also gives us, and this is the important thing here, magnitude. The 120 means something. It, it's, an, it's an IQ score. It tells us where the uh, person uh, is kind of located, and how intelligent um, the person is. It represents something. What we can also do interestingly here, we can find differences between IQ scores and say that 
uh, the difference between someone who gets 90 and, and 120 is a difference of 30. Okay, and between 100 and 120, the difference is 20, so the difference is less, and that's meaningful, the differences. You see, if we try to do that for a nominal um, scale, or ordinal scale, it would not have meaning if we take, let's say, gender, male, number one, female, number two, and we take two minus one, it's meaningless. Um, if Even if we take an ordinal scale, let's take, for example, we took earlier, educational level, one, two, three, four, five, and we take three minus one difference between let's say BSc and SC, and, and we say it's a difference of two. What does it have any meaning? Because um, the numbers represent a rank, not a magnitude. Par contre, ici, when we take IQ score, which is an interval scale, the differences are meaning. See, that's what we mean. Okay, let's see some of yourself. So we could take over examples, temperature, IQ test scores, voltage, true size, etc. Right? You need, for example, we are used to that. So someone like my my own true size is around 43. So right, yours might be 40, 42, 38, whatever. Yeah. So that's actual numbers. It represents something. When you go to 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 the shop and you want to buy a certain, you want to buy shoes. Um, when you say uh, your shoe size is uh, 38, uh, the person understands uh, exactly what, what it should be. So it's I'll be able to identify, order, and the magnitude represents something. If you compare with your friend, and your friend's shoe size is 40, then you say, okay, your shoe size is, is bigger than mine by two. Okay, and that means something. You see what we mean? Good. Very good. Okay. Now we move to the last level of measurement, ratio scale. Very similar to interval scale, actually they are more or less the same. There's a just a slight difference. There's just a slight difference between interval scale and ratio scale. Um, so again, the numbers represent magnitude. We have information about identity order and magnitude, obviously. The only additional information, if you want, you have. Okay, what's information here? But the only kind of distinction is that the ratio scale has an absolute zero point. It starts with zero. C'est pas nécessairement le cas for interval scale. You see intelligence, it does not have an absolute zero point. Temperature, it does not have an absolute zero point. And let's take, a, take examples here again. Zero degree Celsius exists. You can even have minus 10 degrees Celsius on the temperature scale. IQ test, does it start with zero? As such, voltage does it start with zero? Shoe size does it start with zero? Par contre, if we take variables such as height, weight, income, it always starts with zero. So zero means zero, and that's why we can speak about ratios. <laughs> somebody is two times taller than someone else. Somebody is two times lighter or heavier than someone else, or three times whatever. Okay, so it starts with zero, absolute zero point. That's what you mean here. Okay, so you have a starting point of zero, and the zero is an absolute zero point. Good then. Okay, so we're almost done. So a quick summary, guys. Um, so by now I think that should be clear enough. Uh, it does take some thinking and work with the examples so that um, you really get to understand that and with um, levels of measurement are very clear in your mind. So take time to work through the examples. Um, we're going to engage in some activities as well to make sure that you understand that clearly. But I can't emphasize enough on the importance of um, understanding levels of measurement well. Uh, because again, it lays a foundation for quantitative data analysis. So just a quick summary now, um, just a quick summary. Um, so as we said, nominal scale, that's the lowest level, only provides us information about identity. Ordinal scale, provides us information about identity and order. Okay, and you will recall that those two are um, non-numerical scale. So the principle is assigning numbers to categories because you can't actually measure them quantitatively, so you categorize the responses and then, and then assign numbers to the categories. That's the way it works. 
For code for interval and ratio, here we deal with numerical scale. Seven numbers provide us with magnitude. So for nominal, it's only identity. For ordinal, you get identity and order. For code interval and ratio is the three. And the distinction between ratio and interval, as we said, is that for ratio scale, you have a, have a zero starting point. Um, other than that, those two are very similar. Um, I hope um, it's been very clear in your mind. So I've got some readings for you. I, know, I don't expect you to go through all the readings, but if you really want to, you might go and look for those um, source um, materials um, regarding levels of measurement. The most important thing is that you understand that clearly. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so we are done with our short video on levels of measurement. Um, please take time to go through the video, through the lecture notes, and the best way for you to make sure that you, are under you understood uh, everything is to work through the examples. Take the examples again, think about it clearly, and if you have any doubt in your mind, don't hesitate to, uh, to ask uh, questions, whether on the online forums or during our lectures. Don't hesitate. Okay. So, on this note, uh, wish you good reading and um, and enriching um, uh, learning experience overall. Okay. See you in the next videos. Cheers. Bye-bye.